unchanging, O light of our dark sky, we praise Thee for the radiance that from the Scripture's page, a lantern to our footsteps shines on from age to Church, dear Savior, a lamp of purest gold to bear before the nations the true light as of old. O oh, teach thy wandering pilgrims by this their path to trace till clouds and darkness and it they see thee face to face blessed be god father son and holy spirit almighty god to you all hearts are open all desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You were seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. The prophet Isaiah describes how God's word accomplishes what God wants. A reading from the book of Isaiah. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. 
it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have visited the land and watered it. Greatly have you enriched it. God's water courses are filled. You have prepared the grain. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have crowned the year with your bounty and your paths overflow with the rich harvest. The untilled meadows overflow with it, and rejoicing clothes the hills. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The fields are garmented with flocks, and the valleys blanketed with grain. They shout and sing for joy. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful The Apostle Paul reminds the Romans that God's Spirit is alive and at work in us. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life 
because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. describes his ministry through the parable of the seeds. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus went out and set beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, the sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good so soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Ellen Bean was the commander of Apollo 13 and the fourth man to walk on the moon. A friend asked him about the spiritual side of the ride through space. The friend commented that some astronauts say they felt the presence of God. What was that common experience, the friend asked. 
Alan Bean was quiet for a moment, and then he replied, some did and some did not. Deep space is no different from here in that regard. We always find what we expect to find. Alan Bean was right. We find what we expect to find. Some people never find God, primarily because they never look for God. They're satisfied with their lives just as they are, or they're so unhappy with their lives that they don't see any hope. Regardless, the thought of God rarely crosses their mind. They just don't get this religious business, and they let the opportunity to welcome God into their lives slip right on by. In 1973, Gary Kildell wrote the first popular operating system for personal computers named CPM. IBM approached Kildell in 1980 about developing the operating system for the IBM PC, but Kildell snubbed IBM officials at a crucial meeting. That day, IBM came calling. He chose to fly his new airplane. The frustrated IBM executives turned instead to a man named Bill Gates, a the founder of a very small software company called Microsoft. And his operating system, named MS-DOS, today, nearly 40 years later, Bill Gates is worth more than $80 billion. Gary Kildell didn't quite get it. He didn't realize his big opportunity when it came. And so it is with the life of faith. Some people just, they're off flying a plane when God calls. They miss their big opportunity. They never quite make it inside the fold of believers. Other people respond, I got it, but it's not for me. These are people who have been exposed to the gospel, think they understand the gospel, but consistently choose to go off in another direction. A small congregation was facing some difficult decisions. Its denomination was moving in a new direction, and the members of the church were apprehensive about what those changes might mean for them. Let us pray about it, the pastor urged. Let's meet once a week and seek God's direction. But to the pastor's dismay, only one person for the prayer meeting, the president of the congregation. We don't want to pray about it, the president said flatly. We already know what we think about these new developments, and if we pray, there's a chance that God might change our minds. I don't believe I have heard a better description of, I got it, but, I, but it's not for me. Don't think that people Jesus described as rocky soil are necessarily outside the church. Anytime we resist God's will, we fall into that category. A survey of U.S. drivers by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration finds that 60% think speeding by other drivers is a threat to their personal safety. But the same survey also found that 23% admitted that they have exceeded, exceeded the speed limit themselves by more than 10 miles per hour during the previous week. In addition to speeding, drivers say they fear a number of other bad driving habits. Many reported that they have recently seen other drivers weaving in and out of traffic, tailgating, drinking and driving, or ignoring red lights and stop signs. Their worst fear of all, I quote, people who drive the way I do. It's amazing how often we know what we ought to do or ought not to do, but still do not act accordingly. A number of years ago, Eric Byrne wrote a very influential book called Games People Play. In it, he describes a psychological game which he called Yes, But. Burns' game is played by two people, one who apparently has a problem and the other who has to try to solve it. A typical example would go like this. 
my husband, my husband beats me, then leave him. Yes, but I love him. Then persuade him to get help. Yes, but he would never go. Then threaten to leave him. Yes, but he would beat me more. Eventually, the game ends when the one suggesting the solutions has to admit defeat. Well, I'm stumped. I don't know what else to suggest. Leaving the obstinate victim smiling smugly at being beyond assistant. Byrne then suggests how to turn this around. The victim complains, my husband beats me. The problem solver says, that's really sad. What do you intend to do about it? The yes but game is played by people who got it, but don't have any intention of doing anything about it. That's the second response to got to the gospel. I got it, but it's not for me. Here's the third response. I got it, I want it, but I'm too busy right now. Here's where many of us are. We believe the good news of Christ, we treasure our faith, but our commitment to Christ is peripheral. We have many priorities in our life, and our faith is but one of those priorities. It was early evening on November 9th, 1965, when a power station in Niagara Falls became overloaded with power demands. It was set to measure power output and to transfer power to backup systems if the output rose too high. This system had been put in place two years earlier, but no one had thought to readjust the measurements to reflect the changes in power demands in those last two years. At the first sign of power overload, the station shut down and began transferring power to the backup generators. These two became overloaded and shut down, resulting in a massive blackout across most of the northeastern United States and Canada. Airports, utilities, corporations, schools, hospitals, public transportation systems, and homes were without power for 13 hours. Millions of people were affected, and all because someone had not thought to readjust the numbers on the main generator. I see people every day who are overloaded, and it's not that easy to reset the numbers. We want to do everything so well. We want to provide for our families and excel at work and make sure our children are able to participate in all kinds of extracurricular activities and look after aging parents, and the list suddenly becomes overwhelming. And religion, well, it will just have to take its place in line. Jesus described us well when he said, other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. It's easy to feel choked, isn't it? By our many responsibilities, but listen, there is a solution. That solution is to find such a center of peace in our lives that we no longer have to feel suffocated by life so that we no longer have to hurry frantically through life. This, of course, brings us to the fourth response we can make to the life of faith. I got it, I want it, and thank God for it. There are people Jesus called the good soil, who are receptive to the good news of Christ. They understand that faith is not meant to be an add-on. It's not a burden you carry in addition to other burdens. When we open ourselves to Christ and say to him, all I am, all I have, all I hope to be, I give to you. We discover a sudden lifting of our burdens. Then we restructure our priorities according to our faith commitment. Dr. Tom Kim did that. Dr. Kim is a Korean born grandson of a Presbyterian minister. Arriving in the United States, his family settled in Knoxville, Tennessee. He chose a small Christian college to attend. Kim wanted to be a medical missionary to Korea. When he prepared to attend Korean, med where he planned to attend Korean medical schools, despite being accepted at Indiana University, his mother was opposed. She never wanted to go back and didn't want me to either, 
Kim says. Evidently, his mother's wishes prevailed because when he finished Korean medical school, he returned to Knoxville and has been practicing internal medicine, hematology, and oncology since 1979. The unique thing about Dr. Kim's office is that he does not change the he does not charge the uninsured or the working poor. My father became a physician because he didn't want to cease to be as poor as his father, the Presbyterian minister. But he still had the faith, and I do too. I finally realized that I don't have to go so far to find people in need that I could minister to. Dr. Kim estimates that he has seen 4,000 poor patients. When he began this policy 20 years ago, he set aside two extra hours, a night for treating non-paying patients after each of four days of regular office hours. Now all of his patients, both insured and uninsured, are seen throughout the workday. I give them free everything. Something I have free, sometimes I have free samples from drug, drug companies, for giving medicine. Sometimes I give them a check to buy medicine. For patients with ailments he can't treat, Dr. Kim makes referrals and says that most of his free patients could get nowhere if they made the referral calls themselves, but he can. I explain, this patient is without in insurance and ask if they can treat them and work out something on payments. Kim says donating his time in a way of repaying his debt to the U.S., where he's prospered so much. I think, who is Jesus Christ? What would he do? Kim said. He didn't run with the politicians, the big shots, the rich people. He helped people in need. I got a talent curing six people, sick people. And I want to use it to do a little of what Jesus did. I don't want to be a Sunday-only Christian. Four responses to the life of faith. I don't get it. I got it, but it's not for me. I got it. I want it, but I'm too busy right now. I got it. I want it. And thank God for it. Every one of us is somewhere along that continuum. Only one of these responses, however, will bring us life abundant. He who has ears, says Jesus, let him hear. Amen. Please stand with me as you are able, and let us together confess our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord to come. Amen. As the word goes forth from the mouth of God, let us turn our hearts to those in need and offer prayers for all peoples in every place. For Dion, our bishop, Todd and Virginia, our priests, and for the staff and vestry of this parish, for the Moru refugees from the Diocese of Bui, for the Anglican Church of Canada and Linda, their archbishop, for all who minister in Christ and for all the holy people of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for health care workers who are selflessly treating patients during this epidemic, for those serving in the military, and for first responders. May God grant them fortitude and deliver them safely at the end of each day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic and health care leaders who are coordinating responses to the crisis, May God give them wisdom, strength, and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those infected with or recovering from the coronavirus, may Jesus, the divine physician, offer them hope and provide healing. And for all those who have died, may they know the peace and joy of God's love through all eternity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who face economic uncertainty because of the pandemic, may God graciously look upon their needs and bring them relief and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Shelley, David, Marietta, Alice, Emily, Marilyn and Joel, Dick, Carla, Kelly, Ben and the Voller family, Jane, Keith, Jan, Nancy, Cindy, Carol, and for those we name aloud. And all those in need, the suffering and the oppressed, travelers and prisoners, the dying and the dead, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Graces with all creation, St. Matthew and all the saints and angels of God, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, to you O Lord. Lord. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart. The which divide us may crumble, suspicion disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions may be, our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ, Lord. Amen. Amen. God, who sows the seeds of faith, receive our prayers and give life to our mortal bodies through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. 
Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see uh, all of you. Um, this is you may have read in the Messenger and other places, this will be our last opportunity to gather on Sunday um, and for worship together. We'll, we'll gather, of course, uh, over the internet, but our last opportunity to gather until at least September. That's due to the rising number of COVID-19 hospitalizations in our area. So um, we will be uh, publishing a uh, posting, I don't know, the right term um, onto our website early Sunday morning um, that Sunday's service from now until at least September. So do look for us there. If you have any problem in talking to the people at home, if any issues at all, uh, please do call us. We would love to hear from you and help you make this work. We're also available still pastorally, then we encourage you uh, to call us and let, or me, and let me know uh, of any issues happening. Um, our prayer team is standing by. We can bring communion. There's a lot that we can still do from, uh, from a distance, and so please do stay in contact. And we, will, we promise to stay in contact with you as well. So remembering the procedures to receive communion, everyone is uh, welcome, um, and if you would like to receive communion, everyone does have to use the hand sanitizer before they come forward. I will be on this side and Mother Bennett on this side. You extend your palm out and the priest will place the host. The full sacrament is received in the host into your palm. Walk to the end over here. You can lift your mask and consume the sacrament and then return. The important thing is single file line uh, down and back, one-way traffic. And remember that each of the signs is spaced six feet apart. So if you're standing by a sign, you will be six feet away from the person in front of you or behind you. Any other announcements that I have forgotten to make? Remember, the altar before you is God's altar for all of God's people. If you're a Christian, regardless of what denomination you come from, we in the Episcopal Church welcome you. We hope you'll receive communion with us today. But even if you're not receiving communion, you may come forward and receive a blessing uh, at, uh, at the rail. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the words made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he, given, when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ in his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Matthew, our patron, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Now, 
as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all our understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Sure.